So here's something interesting. Behind me stands a building that challenges everything that we thought we knew about African urban development. In fact, I believe in my opinion that it's now become a key monument, one that marks the center of Africa's richest square mile. For decades, African cities have sprawled outwards rather than skywards, leaving the continent largely absent from global conversations about vertical architecture. The Leonardo at 234 meters tall doesn't just break that pattern, it completely shatters it. This towering structure represents more than just architectural achievement. It embodies a perfect storm of accidental ambition, engineering innovation and economic confidence that culminated in one of Africa's tallest buildings. So in this exploration video, we're going to uncover how a modest, I say modest, 33 story development evolved into a record breaking skyscraper. We're also going to examine the groundbreaking construction techniques that made such heights even possible well, just in the African context. And we're also going to understand why the Leonardo's rise signals a fundamental shift in how we think about African cities and their place within the global urban landscape. The Leonardo's journey to record-breaking heights began without any intention of actually claiming some of those titles. Bart Dorenstein, CEO of Legacy Holdings, originally envisaged a straightforward 33-story mixed-use development. But as those initial floors started selling rapidly and the architects at Co-Arc International found themselves in an enviable position of scaling up their ambitions, going higher. See, what had happened was market development drove each addition. A few more residential floors here, some premium office space there, and then someone suggested incorporating a luxury hotel as part of this entire development. Each addition pushed the building higher and higher, and suddenly the development team realized that they were staring at the blueprints for what would become one of Africa's tallest buildings. It all kind of happened because of ambition. Now this organic growth reflects something fundamental about the Leonardo in itself. It wasn't built to break any records. It was built to meet genuine market demand in one of Africa's most dynamic commercial districts, Santon. This accidental and very ambitious nature makes the Leonardo very unique amongst the world's super tall buildings. Unlike the projects conceived from the outset to claim height records, the Leonardo grew naturally from opportunity and customer demand makes it very unique amongst the world's super tall buildings. Unlike projects that were conceived from the outset to claim height records, the Leonardo grew naturally from the opportunity and the demand that was created by customers, making it a more authentic reflection of African development patterns. Now, when you're building 234 meters into the African sky, conventional construction methods hit their limits pretty quickly. The Leonardo's construction team faced challenges from the outset, challenges that pushed them to develop innovative solutions that hadn't been tested on the continent before. The most critical challenge was pumping concrete more than 225 meters vertically. Standard concrete mixers simply just couldn't handle the journey without clogging pipes or losing structural integrity. The team developed super plasticized concrete mixers with specialized admixtures, Omega 1.4 AFR and Optima 100. That maintained workability for five hours while reducing the pumping pressures to manage the levels. Even when you think about the aggregates that had to be reimagined here, standard 22 mil stones were reduced to 13.5 millimeters and 9.5 millimeters to ensure smooth flow through the vertical pipes. The concrete pumps, well, they themselves became diagnostic instruments. Experienced operators could then detect potential blockages by listening to the machine's rhythms. Very African and very ingenious. All of this made it very easy to make adjustments and also to prevent costly delays. Now, the building structure rose in precisely choreographed cycles. The core climbed four to five floors ahead of the concrete slabs, completing each cycle in just eight days. Rather than just surrounding the building with traditional scaffolding, the team used platforms that hung off the building's edge at four-story intervals. This approach allowed the workers to assemble the facade from the inside out using only two cranes for the entire operation. The Leonardo's technical achievements extended just beyond things like concrete pumping. For instance, state-of-the-art GPS technology, similar to those that were used when they were building the Dubai's Burj Khalifa, this replaced traditional laser alignment methods to ensure that the building rose perfectly vertical, which is rather important for such heights. Now, this marked the first development of such technology on a South African construction project, which was really groundbreaking for us. The facade itself represented a masterclass in innovative engineering, using lightweight engineered stones for cladding material. 
The external skin then consisted of transportable components assembled and erected from within the building itself. This approach created the characteristic deep recesses that give the Leonardo its distinct profile while providing shaded spaces for glazed balconies at every single level. Hydraulic climbing formwork from Perry was actually used for the man lift core. Only the second time this specialized system had ever been deployed in South Africa. The experience that was gained here when the Leonardo was being constructed actually developed an entirely new set of skills. Skills that will benefit the future of high-rise projects across the continent, not just in South Africa. Beyond the technical marvels lies a deeper story about South African identity and even our economic confidence. What you have to take into consideration here is that the Leonardo was deliberately constructed using local expertise and labor-intensive methods. Take for instance, 2,000 direct jobs were created here and 20,000 indirect employment opportunities were made from the construction of the Leonardo throughout its entire supply chain. Every single South African who worked on this project left what project director Jamie Henry called their uniquely South African stamp on this structure. This wasn't just about construction employment statistics. It was about proving that African talent could deliver world-class results on the global stage. The Leonardo's mixed-use design reflects sophisticated thinking about urban density and even community building. Ground floor retail connects seamlessly to residential apartments, premium offices, restaurants, spas, and other facilities, even recreational areas. The Leonardo functions as a vertical neighborhood where residents can live, work, and socialize without ever having to leave if they choose not to. The Leonardo isn't just impressive, it's absolutely wild when you actually break down the construction numbers behind this place. So consider this, the building contains 55,000 cubic meters of concrete weighing 139,000 tons. Now to put that into perspective, that's the equivalent to the weight of 19,900 male African elephants. And if those elephants walked trunk to tail in a line, they'd stretch all the way from the Leonardo all the way to the Sun City Lost Palace. And that's a distance of 180 kilometers. The building's electrical system is equally staggering. The Leonardo's penthouse, aptly named the Leonardo Suite, spans 3,200 square meters across three levels with 360 degree views. At 1,900 square meters under roof and 1,300 square meters of outdoor space, it's larger than most shopping centers. Then you've got the outdoor area, which includes a 20 meter lap pool suspended 234 meters above Santon. Talk about swimming with a view. Perhaps most impressive, the building features a one meter wide rainwater collection system that runs down the entire side, turning the structure into a pretty massive water harvesting machine. Now, with 1,251 parking spaces, the Leonardo can pretty much accommodate more cars than some small towns, all while maintaining a pretty sleek and elegant profile, one that's redefined Joburg and Santon skyline for decades to come. The Leonardo's triumph over the Carlton Center carries pretty profound symbolic weight. The Carlton Center, which held the African height record for 45 years, was built during apartheid and now stands largely abandoned in Johannesburg's pretty much dilapidating and declining central business district. The Leonardo though, rising in Santon's thriving financial hub, represents a new chapter in South African urbanism, where the Carlton Center embodied the hubris of an isolated apartheid regime. The Leonardo reflects the aspirations of a democratic society that's engaging confidently with the global economy. The three billion rand invested in the Leonardo represents a massive vote of confidence in South Africa's future at a time when foreign major investments have become increasingly rare. This building behind me proves that African cities can attract the capital, the expertise and the vision necessary for world-class developments. The Leonardo proves that African cities can attract the capital, the expertise and vision necessary for world-class developments while doing so on African terms, using African talent and also addressing uniquely African challenges things like unemployment and skills development. Standing at 234 meters tall, the Leonardo transforms more than just Johannesburg and Santon skyline. It transforms what we believe is possible when African ambition meets global standards. While it now ranks fifth amongst Africa's tallest buildings, the Leonardo's true achievement lies in proving that Sub-Saharan Africa can compete in the global race for the sky. This building has inspired a wave of super tall construction across the continent. This is what it has catalyzed. The Leonardo's journey from modest concept to continental catalyst mirrors the broader story of 21st century African urban development. It demonstrated that with the right combination of vision, innovation, and local expertise, African cities could reach heights previously thought impossible for them. 
In an era where Africa's urban population is set to triple by 2050, the Leonardo stands as both inspiration and also a blueprint for what's possible when cities dare to reach for the sky. The building behind me isn't just one of Sub-Saharan Africa's tallest structures. It's a statement that African cities are ready to compete on the world stage while remaining authentically African. In helping to spark a continental skyscraper renaissance, the Leonardo has achieved something perhaps even more valuable than any height records. It has proven that Africa's urban future reaches towards the sky. Thank you for watching this video up until this point. I hope it was just as interesting for you to watch as it was for us to make for you. Check out one of these other videos and hopefully they'll be just as interesting as this one. Cheers.